How's it going? This is Dylan with Dylan Talks Tone, and we are talking about our next guitar setup segment, string height. So we have broken this down into a few different steps to set up our guitar. Hopefully you've seen the series of videos. First, we started with setting our neck relief on our guitar. And I mention it specifically because it is a different measurement and really the baseline measurement for the rest of our guitar setup. And it is not your action, it is neck relief. So go back and watch that video. Then we discussed nut uh, height and construction and material in another video. And now we're gonna talk about string height. Now, all three of those measurements do interact with each other to some extent. However, if you use the baseline measurements uh, that are suggested with most guitar setup manuals, you will have an overall uh, very good middle of the road setup that can be tweaked from there for your particular playing style. The adjustment that we're gonna talk about today, string height, especially is one of those that is really subject to your preference because a lot of people like high action versus low action. Um, it completely changes how you interact with the guitar. And uh, I may pick up your guitar and say, oh, I don't like the way this guitar plays and you're completely comfortable on that guitar. So this is really one of those measurements that is kind of subjective to your playing style. Some of them are not. Some of them really need to be kind of dialed in for the guitar to work correctly. But within reason, this can kind of be up to your preference. So let's talk about how we measure string height. I'm using our Cruise Tools setup gauge. And uh, cruisetools.com is, is, they have some really great stuff to work on your guitar. We use their setup kits in all of our, um, uh, all of our videos. This particular piece though, I wanna mention because right printed right on it, it has some baseline measurements uh, that you can use to at least get your guitar in the ballpark before you start tweaking uh, to your personal specs. And on the other side, it has metric as well as standard measurements that can be used to set up your guitar. So we're gonna use this particular gauge and we're gonna go with Fender spec on this guitar because it's a Fender Coronado. And let's go ahead and just measure the string height on this guitar. So on the low E, it looks like we're looking at about 1.5 millimeters. I personally use the metric system for these. And on the high E, we're looking at a little bit over two millimeters. Now the Fender spec on this particular guitar, I believe is two millimeters at the low E and the high E. So by all rights, this low E should really come up some and the high E should really come down some. So the way we would do that on this one is we would adjust these thumb wheels right here. Some of them, there is a screw in the top if you have a two nomadic style bridge like this um, on a Telecaster. Uh, for example, there will be a little adjustment screws that you can run up and down. Uh, this particular guitar does not have individual saddles that can be adjusted for the string height at each one. Now this brings up a question. On guitars that are not individually string height adjustable, how do you adjust them? Okay. Now, the way we like to do it here is the string height really needs to follow the radius of the neck for the guitar to maintain really good playability. Most tunomatic style bridges, and there are some other types, do, the, sometimes, especially on a lower price guitar, the radius of the bridge does not follow the neck. So a lot of times what we will do is we will set the center two strings, so the D and the G, to the correct string height, okay? Because that's the highest point in the neck that raises or lowers the bridge, the, the, high, the most distance, if you will. And then many times, because the radius of the neck falls away as you get to the outsides, that will make the outside strings too high. At which point we can go back with a string file and file the saddles until the string height on the outer four strings, the E, the A, the B, and the E, match the radius of the neck, okay? 
So if we do it backwards, if we file the, if we measure them from the outside first, then it ends up that the inside is at the wrong place. So do the inside two strings first um, and set that as your reference point for your radius and then file the other ones to match because you, that means that the outer strings will actually go down further into the saddles um, <clears throat> and have to do those adjustments. So if you're really gonna do a very fine tuned setup on a guitar, that's the way you do it, is you actually have to file the outer saddles to match the radius of the fretboard in order to keep the overall playability of the guitar better. And the guitar really will play better if you do it that way. Now, most people in a basic setup environment aren't gonna do that. Most people are just gonna check the low E and the high E and adjust it and then play it like that. I will warn you that it also means that sometimes these center strings, the D and the G, may be a little bit low and you might get a little rattle in them, okay? So, those are just some gives and takes that you have to take uh, to, to figure in when you're doing your string height adjustment. On other guitars that have individual saddle heights for each string, this is not as much of a problem and you can actually adjust those string heights on each string accordingly. Does it matter what fret you check it at? The 12th fret, the 14th fret, the 17th fret? Sometimes, depending on the construction of the guitar, it can. But as long as you do it consistently for your guitar and get your setup where you like it, and then make notes where you took that measurement and what that measurement was when you got it the way you wanted it so that you could consistently check that measurement from, from now on. Now, a mistake that many players make in the springtime and in the fall, especially when environment is changing, they're traveling with their guitar and their action changes on their guitar, they want to come and adjust this string height real quick to fix it. That is not a problem of string height. That is your truss rod needing adjustment because of the movement of the wood in the guitar. Remember, the truss rod adjustment is the only adjustment that you need to make as a result of something that you didn't touch. Okay? So, if you set your guitar down and you come back to it and something is different, don't move these because you didn't move them in the first place. Move the truss rod, check your baseline measurement for your, um, for your neck relief and I bet everything will all be well. Document that measurement and then you can duplicate it in the spring and in the fall when your guitar moves and that's probably gonna be the only thing. Just a little tweak of the truss rod like that and all will be well. My name is Dylan, this is Dylan Talks Tone, and this has been a discussion of string height. Next time we are going to discuss intonation adjustments on our series on guitar setup. If you have any questions, check us out all over the internet at Dylan Pickups, Dylan Talks Tone, you can find us. If you have any questions, let us know, and we will talk to you soon.